Milo Sonic the Hedgehog. Okay, they're a bit, maybe a bit over enthusiastic about the whole thing, but I like Sonic the Hedgehog. There's a new game coming out later this year. And for the past 22 years, he's had many a boss fight, some of which are quite spectacular. Okay, that was a shit segue. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm done. Egg Dragoon from Sonic Unleashed and Sonic Generations. Yeah, I'm putting both versions of the same boss at number 10 because they're two sides of the same coin. Sonic Unleashed started the boost to win gimmick of the modern Sonic game, so in a way, Generations gave us a daytime version of the Egg Dragoon. In Unleashed, this is the only time you fight Eggman as the Werehog as you are falling constantly on platforms, dodging his attacks and performing quick time events. The Egg Dragoon is a great way of ending the Werehog side of Unleashed before the final boss by ripping Eggman's ship out of the Dragoon itself. As for Generations version, it plays exactly like a daytime boss of Unleashed, boost towards his machine in 3D and 2D as well as free falling. It really does feel like a scrap boss from Unleashed that was replaced by the equally good Werehog battle. It's more challenging due to the fact there is no health counter on meter, much of the classic games, and the fact that he will get in a few cheap hits. Shadow the Hedgehog from Sonic Generations. Yes, it may be titled a rival battle, but it's a boss battle nonetheless. Aside from Metal Sonic, Shadow is the only other rival who can keep up with Sonic, and in this fight, speed is key. From adapting the final battle from the hero story in Sonic Adventure 2, they took it a step further by having you collect Chaos Spheres to power up your attacks. Plus, instead of a straight and narrow path, the call circles round with grind rails and ramps. It may sound easy, but Shadow can and will keep up with you to get to the sphere first. Also, it's extremely exhilarating when you finally get your power up and live and learn plays in the background. Also, if Shadow powers up, all hell Shadow begins and you must evade his Chaos Spears. I will say that it's a bit easy, so try on hard mode if you want a decent challenge. Sonic or Blaze from Sonic Rush Deadline's boss battle against Blaze or Sonic may not be the most creative, but it's one of the most story-driven boss battles. After catching up with Eggman or his doppelganger, Eggman Negger, Sonic and Blaze encounter each other and determine to stop the Eggman. After a heated argument from Blaze, no pun intended, they fight. The battle is basically evading her attacks until she drops her guard, then attack. The attacks become more frequent and fierce as the battle goes on until the final hit. After a bit of dialogue, you must mash those buttons until you knock her out of the platform. It looks epic, but it's not the best design choice if you don't want to break a console. Like I said, it's not the most creative but it's the story that is the driving force behind it and makes you want to know who Blaze is as a person. The Egg Nego Wisp from Sonic Colors on Nintendo Wii. I was pleasantly surprised after 12 years of Eggman being pushed aside as the antagonist for whatever was today's ancient monster of power or equivalent, that it would return as the actual final boss battle in the 3D Sonic games. After collecting the Hyper Goron power from the alien race known as Wisps, or more specifically, Nega Wisps, is able to use Spike, Cube, and Laser Wisp powers. At various points during the boss battle, Sonic will recover the Coloured Wisp after attacking Eggman, but they immediately float alongside him. When the mech is on the brink of defeat, Sonic combines the colour powers of all the Wisps he's saved to perform the combination attack known as the Final Colour Blaster, which defeats the Egg Nega Wisp and sends Eggman flying. Aside from the fact it's Eggman this time round, it's an actual battle that tests everything you've learned throughout the game without the aid of the Wisps. The only problem is that it's too predictable with its tax and it doesn't last as long as you hope it would. Final Hazard from Sonic Adventure 2 What an epic way to end one of the most popular 3D Sonic games of all time. Alternating between both Super Sonic and Super Shadow to take down the prototype of the ultimate life form, who has attached itself to space on the eye via the tower in order to pull it towards the planet, the whole scenario feels a lot more urgent as you only have 5 minutes to defeat it, which may sound fair, but the controls do take a while to get used to. Plus, the prototype will get a few cheap hits and throw you back, thus wasting rings. It's hard to stay mad at it though when you have Live and Learn playing in the background.
Perfect Chaos from Sonic Adventure. Much like the final hazard in Sonic Adventure 2, Perfect Chaos was indeed a perfect end of Sonic's first venture into 3D. After resolving the negative energy of the Chaos Emeralds, Perfect Chaos flooded Station Square, leaving destruction in its wake. Whereupon Sonic uses the positive energy of the Emeralds to become Super Sonic. But that doesn't distract us from serving across water up Chaos's body to take down this beast. Unfortunately, it is an easy boss. Perfect Chaos only has six hits, due to technical restraints at the time. Plus, trying to keep a constant speed while replenishing your rings while avoiding Chaos's attacks, and he only had pass about it. Other than that, Perfect Chaos is indeed a memorable moment in Sonic's history, which is why it was included as a boss battle in Sonic Generations. The Wrecking Ball from Sonic the Hedgehog. There is no way I can leave this one out. Anyone and everyone who has played Sonic the Hedgehog for the first time knows the sudden rush of seeing Dr. Robotic for the first time in the end of Act 3 in his flying machine. Jumping on those platforms and trying to hit him while avoiding the swinging ball of death was tense. Looking back, it was a fairly simple and easily predictable boss battle, but it's so iconic and instantly recognisable that Sega used it not once, not twice, but three times throughout Sonic's history. Big Arm from Sonic 3. Let me know that you only see this boss if you're playing just Sonic 3. Big Arm only has two ways to hurt you. One is grabbing you and throwing you down, the other is the spikes on top of it. What makes Big Arm a challenge is that the one open spot is very hard to hit, so you must time it right or you'll lose all your rings and die. Big Arm gets major points of being able to knock you out your supersonic bomb. Not as iconic as the other boss fights, but it was included as a boss fight in Sonic Generations on 3DS. Death Egg Robot from Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I consider this as the hardest boss battle of the classic games. Being a 12 foot high mecha designed for Robotnik himself, you must fight this immediately after Silver Sonic with no rings. Robotnik attacks by launching his arms like you like rockets and dropping on your head with a tag slam down. Also, don't get caught behind the robot. Robotnik launches a pair of grenades that almost guarantee death. Just be patient and time your jumps correctly, and after 12 hits, you'll escape from the exploding Death Egg. This boss battle is so iconic, it was concluded as a boss battle in Sonic Generations, and has appeared in other games and media. Great Eggman Robo from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Why is it great? Well look, it's huge! This is the inspiration for a lot of our boss battles for a reason, and it shows. After chasing Robotnik at the end of Death Egg, he enters what is, without a doubt, his biggest mech in the classic series. To say that it's intimidating is an understatement. First he tries to crush you with his fingers, and then you blow those off. He uses the power of the mass Remo to fire a massive laser at you while shooting fire. Not to mention the platform you're on is collapsing from the mech walking towards you. Once you've taken this big boy down, Robotnik attempts to escape with the Emerald after Death Egg has fallen apart. Three parts long and a single mistake will set you back to the beginning. Plus, if you collected all the Chaos or Super Emeralds, you turn Super or Hyper and chase Robotnik and another Egg Robot through space. This is, in fact, the most awesome and emotionally fueled boss battle in the entire series. It is especially satisfying if you play through the entirety of Sonic 3 and Knuckles to get there. And those were the top 10 Sonic boss battles. Yeah, you may have different opinions. I may be questioning, where the hell did you put this on? Ah! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just it's my opinion, my video, so suck it. But next time, I have to contend with the worst boss battles. Oh goody.